Here's part two of my engine run stand project. Got it all together. And that piece of the old treadmill, I've got it standing up and bolted to the frame and it's all painted up and it's holding the radiator and the fuel tank. Made a little switch panel. I'm gonna put a couple more gauges in this eventually. Right now it just wears the water temperature gauge. I'll put an oil pressure gauge in the hole and yeah, maybe some other ones eventually maybe a tachometer who knows fuel pressure who's who knows down here we got an oil pressure gauge it's just screwed in the back of the block way back there battery's just sitting on the floor well sitting on a cardboard box because sitting it on the concrete would probably kill it overnight radiator leaks but it's good enough to start an engine up and warm it up on the stand you just got to keep adding water to it here's where the oil pressure gauge screws into this is where the sender would normally go I originally tried to start this engine with no glow plugs and that didn't work out too well so this is supposed to go right there on the glow plug controller. This is battery power. You can see it's two pretty hefty wires because the glow plugs do use a lot of current. And uh, let's see, I figured out that this is the key power wire for the glow plug controller. That's what turns the glow plug controller on. And there's a temperature sensor somewhere in this circuit. I'm not sure. Oh, I guess it's in the controller itself. It looks at coolant temperature and determines by coolant temperature whether it should run the glow plugs or not. But this engine refused to start without glow plugs. Not sure why. This little connector here, I'm going to disconnect it right now, but this is just the wait to start light. So I can put a test light there and ground the other end of the test light if I wanted to, to see the wait to start light on a test light. But I can tell by the clicking in the glow plug relay that uh, after it clicks for the last time, the glow plugs are off and I can go ahead and start it. So this engine doesn't run perfectly. It may just be a fuel issue. I didn't bother taking that off and dumping the old fuel out of this filter. I just hooked up a fuel, fuel source to it and cranked it until it started. And I didn't have to crank it very long. This battery is not strong enough for this. It goes dead very quickly, so I keep it on a trickle charger over there. But it will start the engine. Hopefully, let's go to try. Pressure had me worried for a second, but the spec is 40 psi or above at 2000 rpm, and it's got that beat. When it's hot, when the oil's hot, it does drop down around 15 psi at idle, but according to the spec, it is okay. A couple things to note on this injection pump is get my finger out of the way. This is the terminal for the fuel solenoid. So you have to run key power to this to get the engine to run. And I've just got this harness that came with the engine and it's over here on the back side of the ignition switch gets key power. This terminal right here is for the timing advanced solenoid. And it does seem to start easier if I apply power to that. Other than that, there's an idle up solenoid over here. It will also get power when the engine's cold. There's a sensor in line to both of those somewhere. I have to find it. 
The water temperature gauge is a mechanical gauge. I'm okay with the mechanical gauge for the water temperature, but I don't like the mechanical oil pressure gauges with the thin neoprene hose. I've had some of those blow off in the past. You make a royal mess either in your vehicle or on your shop floor. So I'll put an electric gauge back there in this hole eventually. Other than that, um, everything went pretty well. Engine starts and runs. Doesn't seem like it uses coolant. It's kind of hard to tell because the radiator leaks, but it doesn't blow white smoke. It does puff a little bit of white. I think it might be an injector issue, perhaps an injection pump issue, I'm not sure. Or it could just be nasty fuel, or it could just be from setting. It seems to get better the longer I run it. So I'll continue to run it, and hopefully it'll get really good. And that's it. We'll continue this later on. Next step will be to tear this engine down, clean it up, put head gaskets on it, and uh, I'll post that video shortly. Uh-oh, now I've done it. So once I was satisfied that this thing was running good and <clears throat> there wasn't any major problems with it, I went ahead and pulled the heads off. I wanted to make sure the cylinder walls were good, there wasn't any major problems with it. There's the intake and the harness, wiring harness. And here's the cylinder heads on the bench. So thankfully, once I got this apart, it's kind of hard to see, but you can still see crosshatch in the cylinders. So these cylinders don't have an extreme amount of wear. Everything looks pretty good. The other thing I wanted to see is whether or not the glow plugs had mushroomed and the engine ingested a glow plug tip and it looks like that hasn't happened because it would be embedded in the top of the piston if that were the case and I'm not seeing that so the intake well let me start at the beginning the first thing you have to do is pull the injector lines off I've got those numbered because those are in the way of everything. Once you get those out of the way, then you can pull the harness off. Then you can pull the intake off. And under the intake, there's a, a valley pan. That's outside. It was, it was a nasty scuzzy. I threw it outside. But <clears throat> technically, you would have to pull the injection pump to get the, the valley pan out or in in one piece. I just bent it to get it out of there. But to go back together, I'm going to have to pull the injection pump off to get it in because it goes up underneath the injection pump right there, which is nice. Not looking at these uh, lifters, roller lifters in this engine, kind of makes me wonder if there wasn't a Ford engineer somewhere looking at this and saying, hey, we can do this. Because this looks an awful lot like an 85 5.0, doesn't it? But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Ford thought of it first and International borrowed that idea. I'm not sure. So I haven't pulled the front of the engine apart yet. That's next. I'm going to make sure when I pull it apart that I watch very carefully how this thing is timed because I don't want to get the injection pump out of time. So I'll make sure I'm at top dead center, mark everything and then take that apart. At that point, I think I'm going to take it off this run stand, put it back on my engine stand, flip it over, pull the oil pan off, and, and take the crank out. I'm going to pull all the pistons out, pull all the rings off the pistons, clean all the, the ring grooves and the pistons, put the factory rings back on as long as they're in good shape, and then put the pistons back in. Other than that, 
The injector lines are a little tricky because there's eight of them. Number two and number seven are the two that are the hardest. When I go back together, I have to make sure that I put those in first. And then there's a loom over here with a bracket of three injector lines. I think it might just be one, three, and five. And those come off as an assembly, so those go back on right after I put two and seven on. And then the rest you can just kind of feed in as you put it back together. So, yeah, this wasn't too bad to tear apart. I was, I was kind of shocked how easy it came apart. You don't have to pull the exhaust manifolds. I got those hanging right there. I know better than put those on a concrete floor. They might warp and I'd never get them back on. But I took those off, but you don't have to because they're not in the way of the head bolts. But these heads are super heavy and I didn't want to have to carry the head and an exhaust manifold, so I just took them off. The head bolts are an 11 millimeter 12 point. I used a Chrome Craftsman and I was very careful and I managed to get them all out without breaking the Chrome Craftsman socket. But a 12 point 11 meter impact socket would be a better way to go. So, all right, that's it for today. Next video should show me with this thing on the engine stand flipped over and with the crank out and the pistons out laying on the bench. So that'll be the goal for the next video. Thanks for watching.